Hi folks, I'm going to give you a tour of my boat. Uh, I built it specifically to troll for kokanee and trout and other landlocked salmon. It is a 1981 Mirrorcraft. Uh, the name of the boat is the Pequod. For those of you that don't know, the Pequod was the name of the whaling ship in Moby Dick. Uh, this boat has a 15 horsepower Johnson uh, two-stroke motor on it, absolutely bulletproof. Uh, they can't say enough things good about them. They run forever, take care of them, do the maintenance. Uh, when I redid the whole boat, uh, I did the whole trailer as well. So the trailer got uh, soup to nuts, everything replaceable got replaced, uh, brand new, uh, all LED lighting, uh, new bearings, races, the whole works on that. Uh, the, the Bimini, the Bimini works out really great. Number one, does it not keep the sun off, uh, but it gives me places because it is such a small boat, it's only 12 foot boat. Uh, I can get my net up and out of the way and the rocket launcher is actually on a small boat like this. It almost seems like overkill, but it actually makes more sense on a small boat uh, because I always have those full. It's so much easier for me to just grab another rod that's already set up uh, to troll for kokanee or try a different presentation than it is to actually try to tie them on the boat and, and do all that kind of stuff on the boat. Uh, so I just have lots of setups ready to go and I'll fill that whole rocket launcher. So if I want to change a setup, I can just reach up and grab another pole and in a matter of minutes I've changed my setup and I'm back to fishing. Uh, this boat has a dual uh, 120 amp hour uh, batteries on it. I'll, one is in this back bench, it's built in. I'll show you the front one, but they're basically identical batteries. I have uh, dual Canon Mag5 uh, electric downriggers. Uh, electric downriggers are the only way to go. I started off with manual downriggers and uh, electric downriggers are just so awesome. Uh, this is the way that I rig my downriggers and I, I just find it very, very useful. Uh, the very top thing up here, this is a Chamberlain release. If you've never heard of the Chamberlains, uh, look them up. They're, in my opinion, the best releases on the market. They're, they work awesome. Right below the Chamberlain release, I, I run a snubber. This is an 18-inch snubber down to a 10-pound ball. What this does is because of the way Canon uses their... Uh, their system for their auto stop for the trollers is it sends an electrical signal down this cable and when that signal is broken then it stops the downrigger. Well on this that happens right here. As soon as it hits the snubber it breaks that electrical system, shuts the motor down and my clip to reattach my line is above the water line but the, bo the ball is still in the water so it's not swinging around and it's not banging into the side of the boat. Because uh, for me, what I will do is I'll just pull this and I'll swing all this in next to me. So it's easy for me to reset a line and then push it back out and drop it down. Works really good. I do a, I fish by myself a lot of the time. Uh, that would be why we have the, the mirror up there. The mirror lets me keep an eye on the, the poles that are behind me. I can, I can always see my, my rod that's actually usually behind me. Saves me from just cranking my neck around all the time. Uh, it's nothing special. It's a, I think it's meant to go in a car. Uh, and I bought just a little bracket that I can hold it and point it where I want it. Um, down there, built into that side pod, is a, a Hummingbird Helix 5 uh, with GPS. Uh, Fish finder, nothing special, but it does the job. Uh, when I'm trolling, really what I want to know is how deep is the water and how fast I'm going. Uh, seeing fish marks on the screen is fun, but that's not the most important thing. I think the most important thing is knowing how deep the water is so you don't ground your downriggers out, and knowing how fast you're going because speed is so important with, uh, with trolling. Uh, also have a VHF radio over there. Uh, just basically for safety reasons, but it's fun on tournament days and stuff like that. Be able to talk to other guys that are out there. Uh, the Millennium Marine seats, awesome seats, man. For if you're looking for a seat in about the hundred dollar range, these things are so comfortable uh, all day long. So much more comfortable than anything I've ever tried before. Uh, my trolling motor is actually uh, a Minn Kota Traxxas 45 pound thrust. Uh, the Traxxas motors uh, don't have gears. 
um, it's more like a rheostat. You can dial in your speed to exactly what you want want it to be. That's why I went with that uh, when I upgraded my trolling motor and been really really happy with that. I can I can change my speed by a half mile an hour increments and it and it really works. Uh, back in here, I just have all my uh, boat stuff stuff like that. Another storage area. I built a lot of storage into the boat, as you'll see. Uh, you're kind of hard to see right there, but there's actually two, one right there, one right there, two connections to hook to the trolling motor. Um, that's so because I can run the trolling motor off of either the front battery or the rear battery, but for the most part, the rear battery is just dedicated to it because it sucks the most juice of anything else. Pretty much the whole boat, the rest of the boat runs off of the front battery that we'll see in a minute. Um, except for the Hummingbird. The Hummingbird is actually on its own dedicated 10 amp hour lithium battery and that is such an awesome way to go because it completely isolates it from uh, any of the other electronics and any of the other electricity moving around on the on the boat and it just cleans up the screens you have no interference it just it really really loves being on its own dedicated battery uh, and I'll open that up and show you in there the batteries in there as well and I can also pull it from that position and I can move it up to right uh, right where I'm pointing right there that's that's another bracket and that little uh, bungee cord below there is a little safety leash uh, when I have it riding up there but it's easier to see so normally when I'm fishing I have it up in that bracket but I can also have it down in that one where it's totally out of the way so I'll show you again let me open that up and I'll come right back to this so there is a little dedicated temp out 10 amp hour battery uh, for the hummingbird. It'll probably run that hummingbird for two full days of fishing. Um, but if you can afford lithium batteries, they're awesome. They're lightweight, they last great and everything, but boy, are they expensive. Uh, that little 10 amp hour tiny box right there was a hundred bucks. Um, but like I said, it really, the, the fish finder loves it. Uh, to the left of that little battery, you can see uh, a two amp uh, Genesis battery charger maintainer. That is actually hooked up to the battery that's underneath this back bench seat right here. Charges that. I pull that, uh, the, the lithium battery out. I pull that out and I charge it in the shop. Uh, but also in there, like you can see, I have more storage and stuff like that. And you can see I can just move my fish finder from the little Z bracket that it's in right there. I can move it up and put it in the Z bracket that sits up there. Like I said, I got the little bungee just for extra, to be extra safe. Nice motorcycle coming by. Uh, another thing I do just for extra safety, my downriggers, because they're expensive as well, I put a little leash on them too. Just a real simple little leash that doesn't get in the way. And because I do trailer with it, uh, when I built this boat, I took out this center bench seat. So I took away some of the structural uh, strongness of this boat. So that's why for the the electric downriggers, I went ahead and put a board across it, and that just stiffens the whole boat up, makes it really, really strong. Uh, put a nice little uh, ruler on there, a little measuring tape, you can measure fish. Um, I liked having the boat open all the way through, but I can work around that because uh, it serves such an important purpose. Coming around to the front up here, uh, another Millennium seat, like I said, and this seat, what's kind of cool about this, is this seat you can see that it's just on uh, wood right there and what this system is let me put this down we'll come back to here <laughs> I can't get it off right now this seat is only held down with velcro onto this carpet it's I can move it I can take it out if I'm just fishing by myself and I want this whole front deck open it's it's removable it's just held on with velcro and as you can see it's held on really good i don't feel like <laughs> wrenching it off of there um like i said it's just really nice to be able to get it out of my way when i want to get it out of my way uh and it's just on a board just velcro and like i said it, you have to really want to get it off of there so under here we come to uh Front battery, the, the battery in the rear bench is an identical battery to this. Uh, these are actually marketed as wheelchair batteries. 
uh, but they work great for trolling motors. Uh, they're both 120 amp hour batteries. Uh, there's another uh, Genesis 2 amp battery maintainer charger uh, that's dedicated to this one. So both uh, each battery has its own charger built into it and they're linked together so when I put it back in the gr uh, driveway at night I only have one place to plug it in and by plugging that one place in it lights up both of those two uh, charger maintainers. Uh, here's the main uh, circuit breaker going and then all this goes down underneath and to the back of the boat because I have full on power options back there as well got a battery uh, indicator up here telling what more storage dock lines stuff like this uh, just a real nice clean convenient way to load everything up uh, uh, anyway that's about the end of the tour of my boat uh, want y'all thanks for watching and uh, have a great day thanks